shark is an eating machine. Anything that moves is food. For one California surfer, it's a lesson he'll never forget. Tonight on PM Magazine, find out what it's like to look right into the eyes of death and survive. I just glanced down seeing the huge head of a 16 and a half foot great white. Then Marilyn Beck talks with Katherine Oxenberg about her new movie and about the love she gave up for success. And escape to the heart of the French countryside on one of the most relaxing and romantic ways to travel. Well, tonight and every night this week, I'll be going it alone because Carrie and her new husband are on their honeymoon in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Good evening, I'm Van King. When people here in central Illinois are looking for elegant dining, they're sure to find it here at Jean-Pierre's restaurant in Champagne. And in just a little bit, Chef Jean-Pierre is going to show me how he makes one of his many gourmet dishes. But first, when people think about Hollywood royalty, they probably are referring to the legendary superstars. For instance, Clark Gable was known as the king. Well, right now, there's at least one actress in Hollywood who's a real royal of the blue-blooded variety. Catherine Oxenberg may be noble, but she certainly isn't stuffy. Marilyn Beck found Catherine to be surprisingly down-to-earth, despite her lofty lineage. She's the daughter of a real princess, and she's played a princess three times. But Catherine Oxenberg doesn't have any fairy tale delusions about life. I was brought up by my mother. I mean, as she called the Cinderella story the Cinder Smeller story. <laughs> so the whole concept of, of waiting passively for Prince Charming to come along was never a viable part of my life. I, the messages that I got were very much you have to survive on your own, uh, for better or for worse. Sometimes that makes one feel pretty lonely. That, you're not allowed to rely on a support system. Catherine might protest, but parts of her life do sound fantastic. The daughter of Princess Elizabeth of Yugoslavia and wealthy clothing merchant Howard Oxenberg, Catherine was raised in England following her parents' divorce. Educated in Britain and France, she became a fashion model when one of her mother's influential friends got her a layout in Vogue magazine. Her love life blossomed with an engagement to a wealthy Spanish banker. They never married. She made her acting debut playing Princess Diana in a TV movie and segued into Dynasty as Amanda Carrington. In December, it's back again to playing a princess in the TV movie Roman Holiday. You don't know who I am? Well, no. We weren't introduced last night? Not formally, no. No, we were not. You just picked up someone you'd never met before? You have to take a chance now and then? What's your name? You can call me Alice. You almost fell for the Cinderella story. Got engaged. Do you ever regret that you didn't marry? Well, I tell you, I was very honest and very upfront with my fiancé, and when we got engaged, I just completed the Royal Romance of Charles and Diana. It was my first time in front of a camera. And uh, I was very much in love with him, and he wanted me to live in Spain, and Spain is not the center of the movie industry, so it made life a bit difficult. But I thought that knowing how adaptive I am, that I would give it a try. And so I tried for a year and a half to live as this, the good woman in Spain, sort of running off to audition and do acting, I mean, modeling jobs and stuff like that. And I knew it wasn't going to work. So actually, I have no regrets. It was the hardest decision of my life. Yeah. Sure, because I was I was walking away from a safe situation. I was in love, but I realized that if you as an individual don't feel fulfilled, um, you can never give all of yourself to the person you're in love with. After the breakup of her engagement, Catherine moved to Los Angeles. Not long after that, she was cast as Amanda Carrington. The role was supposed to last eight episodes. She was in the part for three seasons. During that time, there were whispers about romances with a variety of Hollywood's most eligible bachelors. I'm sure the average person has the image of glamorous Catherine Oxenberg running out every night with a different handsome man. <laughs> <laughs> One wishes. Um, people always think it must be so easy. You know, when I look at someone else, and I look, and I, my, it's my inside looking at their outside. But I, I view, oh God, that person looks so glamorous. Oh, they have such an easy life. Or, and then I look at myself, and I, ah, it's such a struggle. And then other people look at me, oh, you've had it so lucky. And I say, no, but you don't understand. It's not, you know, it's not like that at all. I work what is really. It? It's discipline. It's not remotely glamorous. Because I tell you what. The, 
the, the boring thing is, is that if you go out and the next day you are married to the person that you're quietly trying to get to know in the tabloids, it really puts a damper on it and it puts a lot of pressure. So it means that I'm very, you know, I'm very careful about the people I go out with. And I'm, I feel very, um, I'm almost embarrassed. It's like I'm apologetic already before the fact. So I spend a lot of evenings alone. I really do. What would you say is the most outrageous story ever printed about you in the tabloid? God, there's been so many. I remember one that, um, that, I don't know, this is so far-fetched. <laughs> <laughs> I was driving down the San Diego freeway with George Hamilton in his antique Mercedes, which I don't think he owns an antique Mercedes, but that's beside the point. And the car broke down and he took out we were waiting for the car repair people but meanwhile i got bored waiting so i hitchhiked home with somebody god i don't know who and left him wearing um sunbathing on the on the hood of his car with those one of those silver boards that you know they used to wear in the 60s to get that extra fantastic tan i mean, i don't know where these people find this information i mean they've got great imaginations that's all i can say Catherine can laugh about her love life but there is more than a little truth in her situation I've known scores of Hollywood's most beautiful women who have ended up spending many years alone. I don't, however, think Catherine will join their league. Catherine's Roman Holiday co-star is Tom Conti. It's a remake of the 1953 classic starring Gregory Peck and Audrey Hepburn, for which Audrey won an Oscar. Well, when it comes to winning awards, Chef Jean-Pierre knows all about that. Most recently, he won an international pastry competition. Well, coming up next, just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, we have a tale of real-life Jaws. Explore the historic Arcola Emporium. Browse through Galton Glassworks where your country decorating dreams come true. The tailored lady features sportswear and separates for the active woman on the go. At Heirlooms Unlimited, you'll find the Midwest's largest selection of Amish-crafted customized furniture. The Cook's Collection offers a potpourri of gifts and gourmet foods. Capture an exciting new look for yourself at the Main Design Beauty Salon. Then enjoy a delicious lunch and dessert at the Main Street Deli. Come explore the Arcola Emporium. It's worth the trip. Chasing the chill away from a rainy day Oh, something to warm you up Wrap your hands around it America's Cup, America's Cup Dipping Cup of Soup Hearty, wholesome, America's favorite cup of soup America's Cup, America's Cup When man created the main dish, he created the argument what to serve with it. Peas are cost. Carrots. Peas are cost. Carrots. It raged for centuries. Peas. Carrots. Peas. Carrots. Today it ends, introducing the Banjit Gourmet single-serving side dishes, like cheese tortellini, spring vegetables, natural potatoes, and more. The Banjit Gourmet. At about 79 cents, man will never argue about side dishes again. Steak. I thought we agreed on pork chops. Chef Jean-Pierre is very dedicated and spends a lot of time in his kitchen attending to every detail of his work. To a dedicated surfer, the ocean is both his friend and ally. So you can imagine how he feels when something happens which makes him so afraid he can't return to the water. When every shadow could conceal an enemy. When joy and excitement turn to terror. <laughs> California is famous for its beaches, bodies, and boogie boards. Surfers crowd the waters like playful seals, waiting for the perfect wave. But surfers and seals are not the only ones swimming around out here. is Great White Shark Territory, home to nature's most perfect predator, an eating machine that prowls the California coast looking for prey. Anything that moves is considered food, including surfers. I just glanced down, not for any paranoid reason. I just kind of glanced down. There was nothing else happening. And my eyes just filled with an instant horror seeing the huge head of a 16 and a half foot Great White sitting right here in my lap there was no room between his head and my body and I could poke his eye out 
with my elbow. That's about as close as he was. Kind of interesting to be back here again, uh, first time back since the incident. Craig Rogers lives in Santa Cruz, California, in the heart of Sharkland. He and his friend Tim Burston had just paddled out when the massive jaws of a great white grabbed Craig's board. If the shark had attacked just seconds earlier, Craig probably would have been killed. Had I been laying down, my head would have been here. My shoulders, my chest and lung would have been right here. And I might not have been here today to talk about it. Well, in the real world, white sharks don't eat people. White sharks eat seals and sea lions, occasionally a dead whale or a dead dolphin. You can well imagine what a surfer looks like when they're at the surface on their surfboard, legs, arms dangling over the side, splashing at the surface. California water is not that clear. The shark looks up and it sees what to it looks just like its favorite meal, a big, fat, clumsy elephant seal. Dr. John McCosker is director of the Steinhardt Aquarium at California's Academy of Sciences and has come face to face with the great white shark. You should remember that every shark has a different attack behavior, but in the case of the white shark, the star of Jaws, the attack behavior is very specific and is quite unlike what you've seen in the Hollywood film. The shark comes from beneath, stalking its prey from down current, rushes up 45 degrees or even almost 90 degrees, takes one massive bite out of its prey spits it out, waits for it to die, then comes back to consume it. The horror. Oh, we drive on the freeway and we think we might get run over or rear-ended or die on the freeway, but we never think about being eaten alive. It's got to be the most dreadful, most horrible thought of going that one can possibly imagine. Craig was attacked because the shark thought he was a seal. But when there was no blood and no movement, the shark hesitated, giving Craig a chance to escape. I was paddling like I'd never paddled before. And I was hoping that I could get another stroke. And then after that, I was hoping for another stroke. And I was actually begging for maybe another second of life, or maybe another two seconds. And it was a moment in time that I felt so so insignificant. Craig was lucky. Most attacks result in major injury or death. Surfers and divers are attacked two to three times every year in California. That's twice as often as 20 years ago. As the seal population increases, the number of sharks and the number of shark attacks will also increase. Put in the proper perspective, of course, more people drown each year than are attacked by sharks. More people are eaten by pigs in America each year than are eaten by white sharks. But I guess the most frightening, given the choice, would be to die in the mouth of a white shark. As you enter the ocean, you're entering the food chain. Take it or leave it. Like it or not. And you're not at the top of the food chain. You're somewhere down with the barnacles. It's a humbling experience when that once in a while comes along and your number is right on the chopping block. Craig Rogers has conquered his fear, and believe it or not, he's surfing again, but only near coves and where there's plenty of kelp, because sharks usually like to stay away from kelp. But he does keep two shark teeth as a reminder of what might have been. Now, Chef Jean-Pierre has given me the pretty simple task of peeling a carrot because I don't know the first thing about cooking. So what are we making here tonight? Well, then we're having moule marinière tonight. And what is that? I don't speak French. They're mussels, steamed in vegetable, cream, and white wine. Mm, that sounds great. Sounds like one of my favorite things to eat. Well, don't go away because when we come back, we'll escape the hectic modern world with a leisurely French cruise. Look, what do your wondering eyes now appear? Only at Burger King, it's Cuddly Reindeer. Four soft stocking stuffers, each $1.99. Get a deer with your Whopper at the Burger King sign. Collect all four and the best food for fast times. Sue, I got you a Burger King gift certificate because you're special. And I got you a Burger King gift certificate because you're special. Burger King gift certificates, 10 for $5. For the special people. Edna, I, uh... 
The new 88 Plymouth Reliant America. We've added more standard equipment and cut the price to $69.95. The new Plymouth Reliant America. Quality. Backed with the 770 protection plan. Now with a new low $69.95 price. The best is what you get at your price for Plymouth for the best you can get, see Phil Lamb Chrysler in Tuscola. What are farmers really saying about the way Eradicane works in their fields? Well, we used dual before, and uh, it just didn't kill the grasses. So we decided to switch this year to Eradicane for the first time, and it, it worked wonderful. What about you, Don? The performance was excellent, and I got a full spectrum weed control. I couldn't have been more happy with Eradicane. For better grass control than Dula Lasso, farmers like you are switching to Eradicate. Even before you walk in the door at Jean-Pierre, several hours of preparation have gone into making sure that each meal is just right. But for cooks like me, the microwave is still the answer. You know, modern technology really is amazing. You look at a trip that used to take days or even weeks, and now that same trip can be completed in a matter of hours. But at the same time, it's kind of a pity, because it seems that people are in such a hurry to get where they're going that they don't enjoy the going. Well, now, if you're traveling in the French wine country, there is a way for you to stop and smell the flowers. My emphasis is on the escapism. The ability to relax, to get away, to do what you want to do. It's like another world. It's, you know, it's disconnected from a city. It's not in the regular routine. It's like stepping out of time. It is barging in Burgundy, a unique and tranquil French vacation. You won't see the Mona Lisa this way, but maybe you will see something just as priceless. and a more relaxing way to travel. We're floating along at about five miles an hour right now. At this rate, you can not only count the trees as you pass by, you can almost watch them grow. The Burgundy region southeast of Paris is laced with a 600-mile network of canals. Flying the waterways on converted luxury river barges is one of the best ways to see the heart of France. Our vessel is called the Nenufar, meaning water lily. Our captain is an ex-nurse who inherited her father's half-completed barge when he died. Rather than sell it, she carries on his dream. Her name is Kirsty Fawcett. The appeal is the relaxation. I think that's the primary thing. The escapism. The fact that you can do most anything you want to do, anything that pleases you. One of the more fascinating things to do is watching Captain Kirstie and crew maneuver our 128-foot vessel into one of the many locks en route. Locks are enclosures within the canal. Once inside, the barge is raised or lowered to the next water level. Steering our barge inside is about as easy as driving a station wagon into a garage built for a moped. We have maybe two inches on either side, maybe two inches. It's not an awful lot of room. But that's half the challenge of the job. If there was no challenge, I wouldn't enjoy it. The Nenufar is the largest river barge the French canals can accommodate. Even so, staterooms for the 16 guests are cozy. The two suites offer a bit more room. Actually, you won't spend much time there anyway. Relaxing on deck or biking along the canal paths are popular pastimes. The Nenufar carries her own bicycles and is quite easy to catch up with her or let her catch up with you at the next lot. So first we try some uh, rosé wine from uh, Pinot Noir grapes. Afternoon excursions away from the barge take the adventure one step further. We sampled some of the finest French wines from the vineyards of Sancerre, wines that would later grace our table aboard the Nenufar. The Loire Valley lured us to stop with every bend in the road, even though our floating home awaited us back on the canal. In the tiny town of Sancerre, some of the most memorable sites were the townsfolk themselves. 
produce from the market is picked up for our evening meal, a moment of the day everyone looks forward to. Steve Fawcett is our chef extraordinaire on the Nenufar. We're taking a cruise through a certain part of France, so obviously you have to try and bring in menus uh, or dishes which are eaten actually in the region around where we're cruising. Steve is also the husband of our captain, Kirsty. We've got a good relationship and it, and it works out very well. And it's nice to have, on, on a barge this size, to have a, a, a certain amount of teamwork. One has to. And to have the crew who can rely on a couple at the same time. Because then everybody, we all have to work together. And it all comes together at the dining table. From local escargot, the best in France, to breast of duck and red wine sauce. Steve's five-course gourmet feast erases any thought of dieting. I've enjoyed eating. Because then again, you don't have to make any decisions. Something is served for you. And I think if I were visiting here and going in a restaurant, I might not have ordered all the, all the things that, that we've been served because they've been very careful to have a different cheese every day and a different this and a different that. And that's been fun. What about calories? It's a vacation. It doesn't count. <laughs> That. Perhaps nothing quite reveals the serenity of the French countryside like ballooning. After all, France is where it began 203 years ago. For most travelers, this is the final touch to their dream vacation. As we float above our moored barges below, the world seems both small and vast at once. Timeless, yet captured in our memories. Now that looks like a great way to relax. If you'd like to go barging in Burgundy, you'll have to wait until spring because the cruise season is from April to November. A seven-day cruise, including everything except your airfare to France, will cost you about $1,650 per person. But if you'd like a taste of France without having to go there, just come to Jean-Pierre's restaurant in Champagne, where you can order any of his many French gourmet meals. And right now, we're looking at mussels and vegetables steamed in white wine and cream. Doesn't it look great? I wish you could smell it. We'll get to taste it right after this. Come on in. Feel the fluffiest softness ever. Come on in. Fluffy, soft. Fluffy. Soft, soft is feeling. Only Downy has the feeling. Downy rinses in the most softness of any fabric softener. Feel the difference. See the difference. Downy softens best. Come on in. Fresh Downy, feel the fluffiest softness ever. Come on in. Cats can be the sweetest creatures in the world, but they have this problem. Cat litter odor. Oh, sure. Fortunately, most of the problem is caused by one bacterium, too odious to mention. Oh, one bacterium. Thank you. And fortunately, there is a cat litter that attacks and destroys this bacterium. Oh. New Kitty Whiskers cat litter destroys odors and keeps a home smelling like a home. Try New Kitty Whiskers. Pretty, pretty, please. <laughs> Isn't this great? Another Kohl's commercial, and that means more savings on holiday gift ideas. Ready? Uh-huh. Uh, here's a great gift idea. Robes and nightgowns, all 30% off, all from Kohl's. But don't stop there. Take a look at the prices on these famous name watches and fashion rings. These make great gifts. Watch. <clears throat> Merry Christmas. You, you shouldn't have. <laughs> I love the holidays. Mussels now, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is the way they're served in the casserole like that? In the casserole, yes. Okay, and how do you eat them? What's the proper technique for eating a mussel? Well, you, you certainly use your hands and okay. you grab the first one right. and um, take the fork. Just hollow That's it out. Hollow it, yeah. Okay. And then... Mm, these are great. Thank you. You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna have to use the shell and... Okay. Oh, I'll open it. Like a built-in... Uh, Fork of nature, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Oh, these are incredible. Well, thank you. I'm sorry that Carrie couldn't be here to enjoy this meal with us, but she's probably sitting down to a meal about this time with her new husband in Puerto Vallarta. I bet they're having a lot of fun. Well, let's see what's coming up tomorrow night on PM Magazine. With his mind, he sees pieces of life and death.
He's a psychic who's helped police uncover a dozen murders and send 15 people to prison. Tomorrow, follow him on a trail of a family's missing son. First thing I told her is I don't like doing this on the phone, but uh, I have a feeling your son's dead. Then find out how the daughter of a billionaire involved in the Iran arms sale is making a name for herself in show business. And share the joy of a family that's opened its arms to 21 special children. Find out why love is all they need. Well, we'd like to thank you very much for joining us tonight, and I'd like to thank Chef Jean-Pierre for making this incredible meal for me. And we're going to be enjoying the rest of this in just a little bit. You'll want to be with me tomorrow night because I'll be with Psychic Betty Livingston. Thanks for joining us. See you tomorrow night. Good night. Bonsoir. Good evening. Higher property taxes for Macon County. Diamond Star begins accepting some applications and snow and rain from Judy. We'll have reports at 10. Oh, oh, oh. Introducing the Holidays Tumbler from Arby's. At this price, you may want to give it as a gift. Oh, oh. Or you may not. At Hills, we promise the lowest Christmas tree prices in town. Low prices on a big selection. Every one an exceptional value. Should you find a lower advertised price, bring in the ad. We'll match it. But as far as we know, Hill Street prices are the lowest in town. You can save big on trees at Hills. You can save throughout the store. Another reason why Hills is great for gifts. I'm Ed Kelly on the next News Scope. Be prepared for part two of your assignment when Steve Crowley tests your car buying know-how. Financed it over three years. Uh, I tried to lease one once and it seemed to be cheaper than buying it. I think the best way and the cheapest way is to be cash for it. Then the experts say they prefer back-to-basic toys this year. It's natural for them. It's the basic toys. That's what they can really create with. For news you can use, be here for News Scope. Tuesday at 5 on Channel 3. MASH, weeknights at 10.30 on...